All right. Hey, Jeff, uh, how was your week of practice coming off that unscheduled uh, bye week? Are we happy with, with how it went for you for the team? I think everything went well. Uh, you know, we took advantage of it. It's about trying to get as many guys as we can back healthy, uh, making sure we use full, uh, you know, everything we in our power to get that done. And also, you know, we wanted to practice hard, which we did uh, last week and uh, went ones on ones and then kept our young guys out there and, and try to develop them more. And then we got back to, uh, you know, Northwestern on Sunday with an extra practice there. We had a good week. I think our guys understand that. If you're not going to prepare as hard as you can, you're not going to give yourself a chance to, to win. So I think they've done a good job. I think they understand that it's going to take a great effort, and it's going to take everybody fully committed to trying to beat Northwestern at their own game, which is trying to find a way to play harder and tougher and smarter and doing all the small things in order to give us a chance to win. It's going to be November 14th, and you're finally going to make your home coaching debut. <laughs> Are you excited to take the sideline for the first time in ross State Stadium in 2020? Well, it's always good to play at home. So, you know, I'm excited to, to play a great team like the one we are. And I, I know our guys are, are fired up for this opportunity. Anytime you get a chance to play uh, the leading team in your division, uh, you got to take that as a chance to showcase what you're all about. So I'm hopeful that all of our guys understand you know, what it's really going to take in order to win. So, yeah, I'm excited to get out there. Jeff, can, can you give us any, any inkling about Rondell Moore and George Karloftis and King Daru? Yeah, really what all I can tell you is, you know, we're working hard to get them back. And uh, a lot of those guys, unfortunately, will be game time decisions. And really, uh, that's the truth to it. And uh, we're trying to get them back as fast as we can. But we also wanted to make sure that they're, they're fully ready to go. And what about Tyler Coyle? Is he back yet, Jeff? Yeah, I think Tyler Coyle will be back. Uh, I think, uh, you know, he's done a great job of rehabbing and getting back as fast as he can, which – uh, I think he's ahead of schedule, and uh, we look forward to him taking the field. And, uh, you know, the, the COVID numbers seem to be spiking everywhere, Jeff. Are, are, are you going to get your team to Saturday in pretty good shape from, from a COVID standpoint, can you say? Well, I think, uh, you know, that's a tough battle to fight. we got to continue to do a good job of it, and that's communicating. That's doing all the small things, staying in the small crowds, wearing a mask. Uh, we, we've had a little bit of a spike, uh, but it's not something that uh, we don't feel like we can play with. We feel very good that we've done a good job, and we just got to make sure we stay on it. But I'm sure every team has, has taken a few lumps here and there, whether it's some positives and some contact tracing, and we have as well. Are you, are, are you worried sometimes, Jeff, if the season's even going to be able to be finished? I mean, how do you keep the players focused? I mean, every week we're seeing more and more games canceled, it seems like. It's got to be a tough environment to look in. Well, you got to try to make it a positive. And what we've tried to do from day one, even before we even came back uh, for the fall, is let guys know, hey, this is a unique season. Uh, and it's really an opportunity for anyone to play. So for you guys that think you may not get in based on where you're at now, trust me, you can easily get in. So you know, even our guys that are running the service team and giving us good looks that are young, at any point they can play. And we've got some true freshmen playing now, but I think – each player needs to look at this year as an opportunity to, if you want to play early, you may get a, a serious chance of doing that more so than, than otherwise. And, you know, as far as you know, what's going to happen with the season, I, I think, uh, you know, we proceed ahead full speed and uh, always make sure we're, we're, we're safe and we're cautious and we're smart, but at the same time, you know, try to play football if we can. Hey, can, can you real quick just take, take me through your, your home game? routine Jeff are you doing anything differently this year for home games with with the with the COVID situation yes we are and I think uh, you know for us uh, you know our, our meetings have been structured a little different uh, throughout this whole camp uh, to make sure that we, we have plenty of space uh, and we're wearing masks um, you know I know that uh, you know for us we used to go to our hotel and have meetings and do everything over there now we we, we have our, our meetings and walk through and, and we go over, uh, excuse me, we come back after we go for dinner up at the press box. We come back here at the stadium and do our meetings, everything here uh, uh, with plenty of space and plenty of room. And then we go to the hotel later than we normally do and, and get a snack. And uh, so there's less time at the hotel. Uh, there's less meeting time at the hotel. We try to keep them in this environment at this building as long as we can. Where do you guys stay at, Jeff? We're at the uh, 
uh, the Holiday Inn downtown. I got you. Okay. All right. And uh, uh, yeah, I think at this point, Jeff, I'm good. I appreciate the, the, the candor and time as always, buddy. Okay, thanks. Okay, uh, Sam, go ahead. Jeff, obviously you would have preferred to play a game last week, but with some of the injuries and, and some of the inexperienced guys that are going to be counted on to step up, was it maybe good to get a couple extra days of just practice reps for those guys, or is the best thing just throwing them in the fire on a Saturday? Well, you always got to take advantage of any uh, extra time you have for practice and extra time you have for treatment. So we were given that opportunity. We wanted to do it. Uh, if you ask me personally, I mean, I, I like playing every week. I like getting in a rhythm. I like going out there and competing and keeping your guys sharp and ready. But at the same time, every season you're going to have a bye week or two, and you've got to take advantage of it. So this one came unexpected. And I think we had tried to adjust on the fly and, and take advantage of it. And hopefully now our guys understand it's time to go, it's time to go to bat. When you see each of these games getting canceled like the SEC schedule basically wiped out this week, um, obviously you guys lost a game last week. Does it make you appreciate the process a little bit more knowing there might not be a game next week, there might not be a season next week? Well, you never know. I think that uh, our conference especially, uh, but, uh, you know, we're doing the daily testing. Uh, I think we put systems in place to make sure that, you know, we're playing with a clean field. Uh, and you know, I know as coaches, we thought maybe the contact tracing would be fully eliminated. It's really not. And from a player standpoint and taking the field, that's not the best case scenario. But from a safety standpoint, it really is. So I think that's what's happened to a lot of teams is you, you get some positive cases and because of, con because of contact tracing, it knocks uh, quite a few out. And, um, you know, when someone's contact traced, it's 14 days and there's no really meeting around the bush on that. So you know, when guys are around each other or at a certain place and, um, you know, something pops unexpectedly, which which can, uh, you, you could lose a lot of guys. How much is home field advantage kind of eliminated with the, the fan situation being what it is? I mean, other than travel and, and comfortability, I think, you know, the, the lack of fans, you don't get that noise. How, how different is that did you notice at Illinois? Well, I think every team could tell, would tell you that not having a – a loud crowd at an away game is very beneficial. So, um, you know, being able to make your calls, communicate things, hear your snap count, uh, that goes a long way. And I know you know, we've had issues before on road games and state especially where it was loud, uh, got off to a bad start because of it. Uh, and, and those things are, uh, are game changing. So yes, uh, you know, it's probably not as big a difference as it has been in the past. Do the cardboard cutouts help at all? Or, I mean, I, I guess, That'd be a question for your staff, but uh, just for, I guess, kind of seeing visuals out there that, that kind of breaks up the monotony of just empty bleachers. Well, not really. I've still been trying to find John Belushi like John, Joe Montana did that one time. Uh, but, you know, other than just kind of peeking in there and seeing see some familiar faces, I, I don't really notice it. Excellent. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. Anything else? All right, guys. We'll either see you on Saturday, Sam.